Hey everyone, I'm coming to you from just inside uh, the town limits of the town of Dayton, Virginia, here in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley. And I'm standing uh, on the location of the death of Lieutenant John Rogers Miggs. Now he is the son of U.S. Quartermaster Montgomery Miggs, and he is killed here on October 3rd, 1864, during the burning of the Shenandoah Valley. So what's gonna happen is that Union troops are camped in this area, uh, in Dayton, Bridgewater, up near Harrisonburg. Confederate scouts have made their way into Union lines and they are trying to ascertain for General Jubal Early uh, of the Confederate forces, who's in command of the Confederate forces, whether or not they can attack Sheridan in this area and kind of restart the contest with him after major defeats at the Third Battle of Winchester and Fisher's Hill in September. Those scouts will be on their way back to Confederate lines. They're gonna avoid the Warm Springs Turnpike, which would take them right through a Union picket post. So they're gonna come around and try to just get back to Confederate lines a different way. It is a dark evening, dreary, it's wet and rainy. They're wearing these rubber overcoats, which will keep them dry, but it also helps them conceal their identity. As they are riding away, Lieutenant Miggs, and two orderlies will see them in the distance as they have been going around getting the dispositions of their own troops and camps uh, to better be able to move the army where it needs to go. Miggs will see these men, he will call for them to halt. They will ignore him and continue riding. As they do, they will go into a single file. Miggs being suspicious, at some point will pull his, his pistol. He will ride up to one of the Confederates and that Confederate will pull a pistol on Miggs and tell and demand his surrender. Miggs in turn will shoot that Confederate in the groin and then Miggs will be shot and killed. One of the orderlies will be captured. The other one, however, will get away. He'll get it off his horse. He'll pop a fence and he'll just hightail it out of here. He'll make it back to Sheridan's headquarters and he will tell Sheridan that Miggs is dead and that it was bushwhackers or citizens from this area of the town of Dayton. Now, why would he say that when it's pretty obvious that it's Confederates? To him, it wasn't obvious at that point. They're in those rubber overcoats. He probably heard that, you know, the, the surrender demand from the Confederate. And then he just hear, he just knows that Miggs falls over dead. Because of the weather and everything, the firing of the pistols is more of like a flat pop. So he may have not even heard Miggs fire first. Either way, Sheridan is upset. He has been getting uh, bushwhackers and guerrillas hitting his supply trains. And the men go off and they get captured and killed. And just, it's just been hell for him uh, with these, uh, these other uh, pieces of the army he has to deal with that aren't the main army of Jubal Early. And so this is just kind of the icing on the cake for him. Sheridan will be so upset because he really likes Miggs. He's one of his best officers. Uh, Miggs has been an officer for a long time in different commands and Sheridan trusts him uh, with a lot and, and really likes him. And so this is a, a, not just upsetting, but it's personal. And what ends up happening is Sheridan will make uh, an order to General George Armstrong Custer and tell Custer that everything within a three mile radius around the town of Dayton needs to be burned. Custer in turn will tell him as he rides off, look for smoke. Indeed, they will see smoke uh, out on the, that radius. Within the town of Dayton is the uh, 116th Ohio under the command of Colonel Thomas Wilds and they will be told they need to burn the town of Dayton. Now there's a problem for the 116th Ohio. They've been in Dayton and they know that these people um, have done a lot for them. They've been very accommodating and that they had nothing to do with this, um, but they have their orders. So they will go around and they will tell the citizens what's about to happen. And many of them will even help those citizens bring out furniture, bring their belongings out, set them in the yard, and they'll even place guards so that those belongings are not disturbed. In the meantime, Colonel Wilds will write a letter and he will have a courier take that to Sheridan. He will tell that courier, do not leave until you get an answer and you have to make sure this is in Sheridan's hands. Well, that courier will do so. And that letter 
is a plea from Wilds to rescind the order to burn the town of Dayton. He explains that his men have been here and that he knows the town of Dayton, the, the citizens of Dayton had nothing to do with this and it was Confederate officers uh, that killed Miggs. Sheridan will get that letter and he will read it. Now, according to the courier, Sheridan reads it and cusses. He'll read it a second time and he will cuss again. He'll read it a third time and then sit in silence. And finally, he will rescind or revoke the order to burn the town of Dayton. Now the order to burn everything within a three mile radius will still stand, but the order to burn the town of Dayton will be revoked. The citizens will go wild once they hear this news and there's just loud cheering and clapping. One Union soldier says that the cheering is louder than any charge they ever made. Um, the citizens of Dayton will be so thankful, they will actually put a monument up to Colonel Thomas Wilds of the Union Army, um, right in the middle of the town. So a really interesting event that happens here in the Shenandoah Valley. It seems like a small event, but it has huge repercussions as the town of Dayton is saved based on their actions with the Union Army in 1864.